coming up on today's show. I'm a big proponent of uh, limiting and setting boundaries on how much time we spend on electronics with kids. How do you get kids to actually pick up after themselves? Or uh, are there some storage devices or containers or things that you would uh, recommend that would help? One in, one out. So what I do in my house with my son is when his birthday is coming up and when Christmas is coming up, we go in his room and we do a pre-purge before the holidays come along. Tips on organizing your kids and your home today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we're going to talk about the kids and how we are magically going to help them get organized and decluttered and uh, act perfectly. Well, we'll do the best we can. We've uh, invited Jamie Martin on. Uh, Jamie's from Destination Organization. And Jamie, welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, you know, we all would wish our kids would be perfect. uh, And we know that's never going to happen. But we can take them from kind of being a mess to at least uh, somewhat organized. So uh, let's talk about some of those strategies and those tips today. Uh, And, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind, especially with our younger kids, are toys. And toys end up everywhere, on the floor, you know, under the couch. Uh, How do we get control of the toys? Well, I think one of the most um, underutilized strategies to get control of the toys is to stop the influx. A lot of my clients are very good at purging when I arrive and helping them sort through things, but they don't get the part about you have to slow down what's coming in. That means you have to talk to the grandparents, though, because they're the ones that are buying like the 1,500-piece puzzle, aren't they? Right, exactly. Exactly. There's definitely some good strategies to help reduce the toy clutter that comes in as gifts. I like to suggest to people that they can tell the grandparents and the aunts and uncles that we are so blessed to have so much already and that maybe we could consider some non-thing um, type gifts. Well, so some I, I know, big- but grandparents like to spoil their grandkids, don't they? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, not every grandparent is going to be open to that idea for sure. But one of the examples I like to use for grandparents is, you know, if, you're, if the grandparents are young and spry enough, give the kids a gift of an outing with grandma and grandpa taking them to a great museum or an amusement park yeah like an adventure trip or something like that that's a great idea yeah something very experiential right well you know it seems like a lot of kids these dates too um again i talk from some personal experience here uh, they've got all these toys, but then they got the the one thing that sucks up all their time is, you know, the little iPod or the iPad or whatever electronic device. Um, uh, any rules right. or help on, on that kind of thing? Well, you know, kids love them. And we, we're all kind of addicted to our electronics, unfortunately. Um, I'm a big proponent of uh, limiting and setting boundaries on how much time we spend on electronics with kids. Um, It is a no clutter gift, though, if you want to buy them um, um, downloads of books or games or music, that is a no clutter gift. So I, you know, I would definitely be interested in that as an option over things. Well, how how do you get kids to actually pick up after themselves or uh, are there some storage devices or containers or things that you would uh, recommend that would help, uh, you know, getting them trained to do that? Definitely. I think as young as a toddler can start learning that they need to pick up their own toys and actually be able to do it if they're given the right structure. So a couple of things they would need is if you're if your children tend to play with their toys, say, in the family room, then I would say don't fight that. Keep the storage for those toys in that room, because the easier it is to put away things, the more likely people will do it. If it's inconvenient because you have to take it all the way upstairs, it's not going to happen. So don't fight it. Put the storage in that room. Now, what's the most creative storage item that you've seen in like a a living room or a family room that maybe doesn't, you know, not your typical plastic container, but maybe something that's a little bit different? Right. There's a lot of uh, bookshelf and cubby systems that you can put really decorative looking baskets in. And so you can't see through the basket and it looks like regular furniture. It doesn't, it's not all red, blue, and green like kid toys and storage often is. And then just labeling it on the front with a picture of what's in the basket 
it's kind of a subtle way to do it, but then the kids know what belongs there. And that's one of the biggest things I see my clients miss doing when they've tried to organize on their own is not labeling. They buy all these great containers, throw stuff in it, and that if there's no label, that means it's a free for all. Anything goes. Right. Now, when you work with clients, uh, how do they, you get them to train the kids? Is there a, a, a procedure? Do you have a meeting or do you, ha you give them the advice and then they go and try to deal with the kids? How does that all work? I definitely give the parents strategies and it, it is a little bit of parenting 101 and setting the boundaries with the kids and saying, you know, you as the parent, you decide how frequently you want the toys to be picked up. Some people want it every night at the end of the day, the toys are picked up. When I was growing up, my grandma, when I was at her house, when we were playing with the army men and then we wanted to play a board game, she told us you have to put the army men away before you can get out the board game. So you have to find your own comfort level with that, but then stick to the, stick to the rules. Because kids really want rules and they're looking to us to set those rules and those boundaries. So you have to do that and stick to it. Well, some people will say, well, if you get 10 gifts for a birthday or whatever, that you have to take 10 older things and throw them away or donate them. Uh, do you ever see that strategy or is that a bad one? I love that strategy and I recommend that to my clients as well. One in, one out. So what I do in my house with my son is when his birthday is coming up and when Christmas is coming up, we go in his room and we do a pre-purge before the holidays come along. And he knows it's kind of a helpful incentive knowing that you're going to get new things soon makes the purging a little easier. And um, his big thing is books. So we go through the bookshelf and we, I, I actually play a game with him that I learned from Judith Kohlberg's book on chronic disorganization. And I just adapted it a little bit for kids, but it's um, best friends, pals, and strangers. And I hold up each book and I ask him to categorize it as a best friend, a pal, or a stranger. And he knows the strangers get donated to kids who don't have books. And he, he feels good about that. Mm -hmm. The um, pals, in my house, I have some storage in the basement, so they basically get rotated out for a while. So they're in boxes in the basement, and then the best friends stay on the shelf in his room. Well, what do you think as far as working with kids? What are their top you know, two or three things that make them disorganized? Um, let's see. Other than the fact that they're kids. <laughs> yeah. They just haven't learned the strategies yet. I, you know, I, I think anybody can be organized if they're taught the strategies. Some people are just born organized. Like I think a lot of us professional organizers just came out that way. We're organized and we didn't need to really learn a lot of strategies to be organized, but just teaching them. And a lot of times the strategies that they will learn are by your example. So if they see you purging your own things, then they're not gonna feel uncomfortable about doing that in their own life because you're setting that example for them. If they see you incessantly shopping and bringing things home constantly, and then that's what they think is the right way to live. Well, what do you think about reward systems? Some people say, well, either you gotta pay an allowance and as an exchange for your allowance, you have to keep your space clean, or some people will say, you do this, this, and this, and we'll give you that. Uh, or should kids just be expected to do it without any kind of reward? I, I like to use rewards if I can't get the task done without it. Um, if it's a really non-preferred task, then a reward is definitely valuable. Of course, when we're talking about reducing clutter, we don't want the reward to be a thing. Right. It's better to have it to be an experience or money. Um, my son, for example, gets an allowance without chores just so he can learn how to manage money and understand to save it and, and how, you know the value of it and things like that. Because I think as a member of a household, everybody should be contributing to taking care of the house, whether you get paid to or not. I take care of the house and I don't get paid to do it. So I kind of feel like the kids don't necessarily need to be paid to do the standard things like empty the dishwasher, put away their clothes. Right, right. Now, uh, are there any other strategies specifically when it comes to decluttering or getting kids organized that you can think of right now that we haven't covered? I really like to get the kids involved. Once they get to be about preschool age, mm -hmm. that's the way they learn is by actually doing it with you. Sometimes you can get it, make it into a game for the kids because this is likely not a preferred activity for them. And give, give each kid a paper bag and set a timer and say, let's see who can fill the bag first. Or, you know, the, we have five minutes, 10 minutes. Let's see how many bags you can fill of things that you're willing to donate to kids who don't have as much. So you can turn it into a game that way. 
You can ask them um, when you're ready to purge because the holiday's coming to shop for their favorite toys or their favorite books or their favorite stuffed animals. So it kind of turns it around to a positive rather than a negative. Instead of thinking about the things I'm going to get rid of, I'm just thinking about the things that are most special to me and these are things I'm keeping. Awesome. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break. We've kind of talked now about the you know, how to get them organized and, and maybe pick up some of the things, but they're sharing this house with uh, a family. So when we come back, I want to talk about some of the rooms, the common rooms in the house that uh, kids interact with the rest of the family and how we keep those organized and, and how parents interact with their kids as well. So we'll do that in a moment. We are talking with Jamie Martin from Destination Organization, and we'll be right back. Looking to get your home organized but don't know where to start? The newest ebook from Smead will help you with room by room organizing tips given by the top professional organizers in the nation. Download your free copy now at smead.com forward slash room. That's smead.com forward slash R O O M. Smead, keeping you organized. We are back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about helping kids get organized and living. Uh, in harmony with the family, and uh, we are talking with Jamie Martin uh, from Destination Organization. That's destorg.com. And uh, Jamie, uh, where are you located in the in the United States? I am in suburban Chicago. Okay, great. Well, before the break, we kind of talked about some of these strategies and tactics to help kids uh, learn how to get a little more organized and their clutter and stuff. But you know. A lot of it depends on the rest of the family and, and there's shared spaces. You know, I, cut, I think about the place that we hang out the most, which is the kitchen or maybe the, you know, the family room. Everybody's using the space and it um, seems sometimes everybody thinks it's someone else's responsibility to clean it up. But uh, how, how do we get like the kitchen organized when you've got a family going and how do you get different people involved? Um, I think that when, you, when you're talking about kids clutter in the kitchen, a lot of time it centers around homework or maybe craft items. Okay. So creating a home for those things in the kitchen rather than pretending they're not going to live in the kitchen is a good strategy because that is where people naturally want to hang out. So let's create a, a bin for each kid. I like to have like a magazine file for each kid to have their workbooks in that they're using for school or if they have flashcards or things like that. And so the things that they need are right there in that room. They can do their homework and then put it back in the bin. So at least it's not spread out all over the counters and now we can't prepare food or sit at the table and eat. Right. Well, do you have any rules in your house as far as like, okay, if you're, you're done using it, you got to move it back to your bin or, you know, an hour before dinner, everything's got to be off the, off the counters. Um, any kind of rules like that that help uh, keep that clutter down in the kitchen? With my son, when he comes home from school, he knows the first thing he does is put his shoes away and then he empties his backpack oh, okay. and he brings all of his backpack stuff to the kitchen table. And, and then when, we, when he knows when we do homework, as soon as he's done, everything goes back into his folders, it all goes back into his backpack and he's ready to go for the next day. Mm -hmm. So it happens as soon as he comes home from school. Now, do you have a designated place for the backpack to sit? Is that in, a, in the kitchen or is that in a cubby somewhere? Uh, I have a hook for his backpack by the back okay. door where we come in and out, and there's a closet there as well that we use for shoes and coats. Okay. So it just stays there. He takes out what he needs and leaves the bag there and then puts the things back in it when he's done. Well, how about the parents? How, what's their role in the kitchen, and how do they help manage the, the clutter there? Um... You know, I, the, one of the big clutter items in the kitchen, which isn't food at all, food related at all, is the mail. Mm. The mail comes through and it uh, seems to always end up or start out in the kitchen. And um, so, you know, it's de definitely good to have a, uh, a process that happens with the mail every day that you sort through it. You open up all the envelopes, get rid of all the fillers and the junk mail, recycle that. You stand right over the recycling bin and do mm. all that and then pare it down to just the essentials of the things that are left that have to be acted on. Right. And then those need to have somewhere to go until you actually act on them. Now, do you have little mail slots or mail bins or something for the, do you sort the mail there or does everyone kind of know where it is and come and just get what's theirs? You know, in my household, you sort it out by the person 
it's on the kitchen table. Everybody handles it daily and it moves out of the kitchen immediately. But definitely if you have, you know, especially if you have a family member who travels a lot for work or something, you can have a slot for each person where their magazines and their, and their mail that they personally have to handle can go in there and then they know that that's where they look. Yeah, I know in our house, a lot of times the mail ends up in the front hall on like a, we have a little bench there. Uh, any ideas or tips for organizing that entryway? Because, you know, that's the f first thing people see when they walk in, but sometimes it can be the messiest area. Right. Um, you know, having a home for everything thing that wants to live there is a great idea. So if your male wants to live there, then have a recycling bin there so that you can open it up and do the process I just talked about and then have mail slots right there. So everybody's mail gets sorted immediately rather than it just laying around. Um, I think each person needs to have space for their coats, hats, mittens, shoes, boots, within reason. What I see at most people's houses is they want to keep every single pair of shoes that the entire family owns at the front door or the back door, and that's unrealistic. It's just it can't happen. There's not enough space. So I like to promote having the top two or three pairs of shoes per person, space permitting, and everything else stays in the bedroom. So if you wear that fancy pair of shoes that you rarely wear when you come home, they need to go back upstairs. They don't need to stay by the back door. Right. What other things in that uh, main family living area, you know, so we talked about the kitchen, uh, the hall, you know, entryway. The family room is another, like, common area that kids hang out with their parents or their friends. And, and any uh, tips on getting that organized? I think one of the family room clutter things that relates to kid is video gaming systems. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of remote controls and um, the game discs themselves and the consoles and a lot of people have in that room that's easy to get in and out of will definitely help the organization of the room. But again, it comes back to the parents making sure the kids understand the rule is when you're done playing with it, it has to be put away. All right, great. Well, one, one more thing I want to talk about is that uh, uh, kids uh, seem to always want more of their parents' time. Parents are usually pretty busy. They're, they've got commitments with other parents, other, you know, their friends. Uh, how does a parent do it? How do, you, how do you learn to say no to certain things? And, and do you have any ideas on how the parents can actually spend more time with their kids by eliminating other things? Yeah, I think sometimes we end up with more clutter just because the parents feel guilty that they're not spending that much time with their kids. And so they'll give them things, hoping that fills that void. But, you know, you're right. The connection with the parent and the child is what the kid really wants the most. And really, the parents find it very fulfilling, too. They just have to slow down and, and realize that that is a priority to them. I think it's a lot easier to say no and set boundaries with other people like work or other volunteer organizations if you are clear about what your priorities are. If your family is your priority, then it should be easier to say, no, thank you, I don't have time to do that activity with you. But there's a lot of different ways you can say no in a nice way. If I don't have time this month, but I might have time in a month, I could say, you know, I would love to help you on that volunteer committee, but I can't do it this month. Is it okay if we touch base next month? Mm -hmm. Or you can suggest, uh, I, I, I don't have time right now, but I might know another person who's interested. Can I help you find somebody to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great. Those are great tips. Um, well, let's, uh, we're just about done here. I want to uh, give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about your practice, uh, uh, you know, how people can get a hold of you, what, what are some of the services that you offer, and, you know, what's your market area? You probably, are you predominantly in the suburbs there of Chicago? Do you do any virtual? Uh, let us know about that. Okay, I've been in business for nine years. I specialize in overcommitted stay-at-home moms who have probably three kids under the age of five, mm. and they're completely overwhelmed. Uh, I also work with uh, entrepreneurs, and they are fabulously um, creative and are always coming up with new ideas, but they have a hard time running the office, and so I can help them get their office streamlined and help them with time management. So those are kind of my two main organizing areas. I also have another part of my business, which is you, kind of unique to me in that I used to have a career in marketing and product development in the consumer products industry, okay. and so I do consulting back to companies who do storage and organization products okay. and help them understand consumers' actual usage in the home and what I see and how it relates to their product development. 
Awesome. What? So those are my main three areas. I'm in, I mostly work in the suburban Chicago area. And, um, and what was your uh, website again? www.destorg.com, which is abbreviation for Destination Organization. Destination Organization. Destorg.com. Right. That sounds great. Well, hey, thank you for uh, spending some time with us here. Uh, I think parents hopefully will feel a little more uh, in control now. And if they can just spend some time, you know, physical time with their kids and, and help train them, uh, their whole household can probably be a little more organized. Definitely. Great. It's uh, Jamie Martin from Destorg.com, Destination Organization, today on Keeping You Organized. Coming up next time on Keeping You Organized. And I just want to open up the perspective that you've really got to feel good before you want to clean up your act, whether one way or another.